Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and you're not. And I'm Paul Kidwell. Welcome to the Geek Group, where today, once again, we're in the basement of the Science Building here under Cayenne Mountain and we've got fun toys. Today we're going to talk about oscilloscopes, yes, which are like are. geek porn. This is so cool. Mm -hmm. And this is one, it's an old Senko, it's a display kit, it's kind of like a Heath kit kind of thing that we've had on a small demos bench forever. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get this out and do a demo on it because I know you wanted to do a whole series on basic electronics. Yes. And this is kind of the kickoff video for that. Yes. So we're is. going to talk about oscilloscopes. Yes. So it's your mojo. Let's, let's tell people about this. All right. Um, you were calling this geek porn. This would be the peep show because everything's exposed. You can see yeah. the whole inner workings of... Uh, an oscilloscope here. Now this is this is the simplest oscilloscope ever. This is you aren't <laughs> doing measurements, you aren't this, this isn't an instrument for actually analyzing things. This is more just for demonstrating what's going on. Okay. And the whole center of the thing is this structure here. It's the the electron gun in the back and there's deflector plates. There's uh, vertical deflector plates here and horizontal deflector plates right here. Okay. And your, this generates a stream of electrons. Um, they originate in a filament uh, and cathode arrangement in the back. There's anode grids right in this area here okay. that gets the electrons moving that direction. Then you have uh, little plates a set there that are here for horizontal deflection and a set here that are oriented like this for vertical deflection. Now let's get a really big close up on there. Zoom right in and, right and we'll this. show those, hang on a second, we have, we have weirded out. Oh yeah, we lost the close up camera over here, but we'll smack that in a minute. Um, now zoom right in, yeah, you can see them there. Now yes. this here is the electron gun and anode and plates yes, assembly. Mm -hmm. all, through, all through here. Right there. Okay. Are your cathode and anode grids. Okay. There's one set of deflector plates, and right there are the other set. You can see the uh, vertical deflector plate real easy because you're kind of side on to Yeah, it. and it's got like a horn shaped on the front, on the front because yeah. they, they come out and they diverge down the end of the thing. Yes. So this actually shoots um, an electron beam from the back and by modifying the voltage on the plates, it changes the, the electrostatic charge on the plates, it and deflects that deflects the, the beam. The beam. So it works on electrostatics and magnetics, which means if we were to take a magnet... Well, hold on. We have on this end a, a phosphor screen, Yeah. and um, we're actually shooting through the back side of the lens, or the, the tube, so you can see the back side of the yeah, screen. Yeah, we, we can get a close-up over here. Yes. Um, Let's let's give we the camera it. guys. They they need a moment. They got to mm -hmm. zoom out, and then they come over here and they zoom in. So okay. Now we can actually see the back. Yeah, and you can see it's green phosphor, so you're getting a nice green glow. And they do that because just that's the chemical that glows when you hit it. Or it's well because I've never seen an oscilloscope that was any color other than green. I have seen like orange, but that wasn't so much an oscilloscope. It was a little more developed than that. Okay. And. I've seen like the orange CRTs and stuff, but yes. I've never seen a, a true, like every oscope I've ever seen was always like a, the green color. I believe green phosphor was like the first one they developed really. Okay. But oh, go back, go back, go back. Oh, I had it. Um, you, you had it for just a moment. What um, the horizontal, there you go. the horizontal deflector is synced to uh, 60 hertz AC line. Okay. On this one. On, on this. Um, actually, there's uh, selections here for picking internal or external. Okay. So I got internal for horizontal, and I've selected external, which is our uh, Beckman signal generator here. Okay. And I've set it up to output a sine wave, and depending on the, the multiple of 60 hertz you're at, you'll get different patterns out here. And this is a... Lizacious pattern. Yes, and if I get that to stop, we'll both be at 60 hertz, and depending on what All the right. angle is, it'll there be slightly go. out of phase. So in theory, I should be at 60 here right now. You're at, at you are You're at, at 60, 60 straight yes. up. Now, as I ramp this up, I should be able to hit a harmonic at like 120. 
You're you're above it. I'm way above it. Yeah. Oh, oh. hang on. There's another. And this is all you can. Now there's math to this too. In there's looking at a lasacious pattern, you can you can count the number of humps on the side. You're at ninety right now. Yeah. Um, which is why we've got two here, and then you know the, the you, you count like the humps on the it's top. It's like one and a half. Yeah. Why don't you get to a hundred and. You're almost 20. there. That ah, ah, back up. Okay, this thing here it doesn't average over time on my display, so. Okay. So you can see since it was if I get it two, to just now you're at stop. The, the second, so it'd be 120. Yeah. There you go. All right, and it's like any multiple going up. Yeah. Now so, I, I wanted to show the magnet thing because it shows a deflection. Okay. If you take a magnet, and we look at the screen on there, and I come in from like above with a magnet. And this is one of the hard drive magnets in the autopsy the other day. And I bring the magnet in, you can see it moves the image around. It's actually pulling the image to the magnet. Yes, because your, your it, electrons it, are it affected pulls it by to whatever magnetic side field. I'm on. We, we, I'm not going to start talking about a right hand rule and all that sort yeah, of that's, stuff. Yeah, that's a little more than we need. And if I come right in at the screen, you can see it, it'll, it'll move it right out. If I flip the magnet around, it moves it the other way, and it's, it's really cool. Well, the other side of your magnet's got a metal plate. So. Yeah, it's not as good on the other side, but it moves it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, like, you can swirl stuff right around. That's kind of neat. You can actually bend it back on itself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what you can do with a magnet net, because it's, it's all about moving a beam in certain specific ways, and it's a, it's, it has a lot to do with timing and the positioning of the beam. Exactly. And that's pretty much what an oscope's all about. Correct. Okay. Now, we have larger oscilloscopes that let us actually do measurements and whatnot and have a lot finer control over what we're looking at. Now I know you brought a couple uh, good decent scopes, but did you bring any of the, the giant not, Uber scopes? We did not get a chance to pick up any of the old okay. vintage uh, scopes that we have at the lab. Okay, because I know we've got some of the big HPs that weigh like yes. 150 pounds. I mean, they're huge. We need to go through those to find out which ones actually work. Yeah. But that would be cool just to go through and show the... Uh, be a good video to go through and like do the, the restoration on one. Mm -hmm. Well, see, that should be in the Oscope series. That would be a good idea. All right, so what do you want to do next? Uh, let's see. Shut this down, get rid of it, and bring one of the uh, other scopes in. Okay, um, I'll start killing power. Those will just unclip. And Corey, if you would be so kind as to... Because this one doesn't have the... Uh, well, when we either. update this, it needs an IEC socket. Thank you, sir. Here, set this off somewhere safe, if you would, please. No. And while you're doing that, I'll get this one plugged in. Oh, now, that's a thing to talk about, because it took me a while to figure that out when I got my first oscope yeah. of how to do that. Yeah, you, uh, you push in on the sides, and the handle will rotate. So there's good for carrying. Get but it out of but the, the trick is to you push them in. Yes. Most of them. Some have a little button, but or you can set them so that it makes a halfway now, decent. Hang on a second. Stand. While we uh, while we have this, I, I would like to set it up on end. Okay. Um, and if Corey would please hit the blocking monitor, turn it off and then turn it back on. It's angry. We've lost and plug the power in. Video for feet or something. You're going to have to zoom way out. Yeah, we'll zoom out, but this way we can, we can see it really clearly. And this will let us show everything to people. All right, there we go. That's what we wanted. Now, I'll zoom way out. Okay. And we can talk about the scope. There we go. All right. Zoom in a little bit. A little bit. Okay. All right, so there's the front of our oscilloscope. Yes, and right in here. Now this is a pretty basic one. This is this, this is, is like fairly 70s. low end. It's got a couple of neat little features, like you got separate sweeps for the, your A and B channel. But uh, the things you need to look for to just ba have basic operation. Here, why don't you plug that guy in? It is plugged in. Okay. Um, you need to find the power switch, and. This one here, the switch also controls the strength of the illumination. There's a light in here to illuminate the grid, which we can't really see on the video here. Um, you have two channels, A and B, and some sort of mode select to display which channel you're actually going to throw out on the scope here. 
Now, can it put, I, I see there's two channels here. Yes. Can it put here. both channels on a scope at the same time? Well, the other thing you need is the trigger, and that's what makes it sweep. There will always be a line setting, which just like the uh, demonstration scope we had there, it syncs the horizontal to your AC line. Okay. So I'll select that, and that'll give us but that's a not, line. But that's not moving at the 60 hertz well, of the, you control the AC line. Each what is, hang on a minute, what is this little uh, artifact moving in the back? It's the, uh, the intensity is cranked up oh, okay. rather far, so you're getting that. Oh, okay. Now, that, that looks much better. Um, the grids, the vertical lines, are a time base, and you set that with this knob here. So these are a fraction of a second or right. something? Well, right now I'm set at one second per grid. So if I crank per that grid, up, yeah, that was that was going way faster than one second. That's that point one that's second. Point one yeah. second. Okay, I didn't. I couldn't see the decimal point. All right. So there's. It takes point one second for the dot to go from one grid line to the next. Okay, that seems about right. So here we're into milliseconds. That's fifty milliseconds. Twenty, ten, five, somewhere around there. You start getting a continuous line. So there's one millisecond per grid line. Okay. And you can adjust the horizontal position of that. So you can, you can center it, and once you get a waveform in there, you can adjust. Um, there's a, a trigger you set that we'll get into, but you can set the trigger right on a grid, so you can start counting grids so you can get how much time it takes for a particular wave. Okay. But uh, you can set the up and down position. Usually you set that at zero, if you're playing around with AC or... Uh, some sort of wave. Um, you can have it display, okay, that's channel one. I'm going to move channel one so it's in the top half. It's on the center grid of the top of the display. I'm going to switch over to channel two. And... You need the channel... Nope, it was off screen. Oh, okay. So there's channel two. Alt is alternating, where it'll display one channel and then the next and then back to the first. Oh. So that way you can get both lines so up at the same time. Let me smooth the pattern down here, the, the timing. Yeah. And you see can see it does one then the other. Yes. And this, by the way, goes all the way down to half a second per grid, 0.5 second between for, for the grid spacing. Yes. That's neat. Now, there's some other features, like you'll notice there's a second knot line here. I haven't really played with it, but you can have one trace go at one time base and another trace go at a different time base. I oh, guess, okay. And things like that. But, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab our little, let's hmm. see. What you got, Paul? I got a set, of, this is a garbage set of leads, but it'll do for what we want to do here. Do me a favor and hook Hey, it's, move, it's showing stuff. Ah, okay. Um, Tell them why, Paul. We have... Let's it's pretty loud, actually. <laughs> I'm on channel one, and let's go I'm gonna. To I'm going to bring channel. your speed up a little bit here. Hold on. To... Uh, DC, and... Here, here. These, the, the knobs on this one are a little wonky. I think it's as you change the it's pressure when I, on When there, I touch yeah. this, yeah, you get better connection. But we have fluorescent lights around us. And like a, a lot of equipment. So basically your body acts as a big antenna. And it picks up the AC around you. Mm -hmm. And basically by it's, touching... It's picking the up the, the big... Waveform that we see here is you could bet that's not a 60 hertz well, fundamental. Here's, a, here's where you can do your measurement. I'm okay. going to use the position to put the wave crossing the zero line right there. Okay. It goes up, it comes back, and crosses the zero line right there. So okay. we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven point six grids okay. at two milliseconds. So that's 14, that's like 15 something milliseconds. Mm -hmm. If you enter 0 0.015 and hit 1 over x on your calculator, you'll find out what frequency we're showing right here. Okay. Might be worth doing. I think it should be about 60 hertz. It, I would imagine so, given that we're in a sea of fluorescent lights and there's yes. three big CRTs in front of us and, you know, yeah. Okay, now, what I'm going to Well, do I know how to, I, hang on, I know a better yeah. way. 
instead of instead of doing that the hard way with the math and all that, yeah. What if we were to take this and set it to and to set it to generate a 60 hertz sine wave and put that in on channel B? That'll work. So we got a sine wave. I'll dial it up to 60. Um, I need another probe to plug into channel B. These are the good probes. This thing sucks so yeah. bad. Well, no, it's for doing like kilohertz and it's old, but it's doing a average over time for the frequency. Yeah, I don't want an average over time. I want well, the frequency that's the way it I got works. And you right can now. see that light is showing you how often it's doing a sample. So you need to do very fine adjustments. This sucks so bad. All right, I'm at I'm at 59, 60. I'm bouncing between the two. But I'm there. Have you got us a signal on B? Okay. Do you need some amplitude? Hold on. No, I need... All right. We'll set up our positions okay. like we had them. So now I've got, I've got 60 hertz on the signal generator, and that's feeding channel B, which is a nice even line. And we're, we're and right you're, there. And you're right there. See, I was right. It was 60 hertz. Yeah. Now there's there's... This is nice and clean, and this is fuzzy. So well, this is picking up high frequency noise as it's well. It's picking up all kinds yeah. of stuff. I and mean, it's, we have it's a high frequency component of you. It's the fundamental is our main 60 hertz thing, but it's fuzzy because of a high frequency component, which is probably given where it is. Wi-Fi, cell phones. Actually, I was like thinking it's your wireless mic. Could be. Yes. Because that's that that's the highest power, closest thing to it, and this is demodulating a bit. So I got an antenna back here. It's not really making that much of a difference, but anyhow, let's um, let's do this. I'm going to get rid of channel two, okay, or channel B rather, and go back to channel one, okay. And I'm going to set that on triangle. And, and I'm going to move the uh, position down. Hold on, I'll take. Uh, for, I would have. Oh, that you've got here, over there. There's okay. a so setting here that I've been flicking. When you set it to ground, you're basically grounding the input, and you use that for setting your zero. Oh, okay. All right. Now, if you have an AC signal that's got a DC component in it, meaning it's offset, you can flick this to AC, and it'll even your waveform out above and below where zero is. Okay. You can also do DC, which our waveform is actually not plus and minus so many volts, it's ground going up to something and then coming back down to ground. Okay. So that just identified that for us there. But how, how do we know that? Because can the oscilloscope tell us that it's it's ground up to something and back? Well, from the look of it, I can tell you there's ground is at zero. Okay. Ah, we are going positive and negative on okay. this. Because that's zero and you can see we're going positive and negative. Okay. This knob here adjusts the, the vertical uh, grid. Okay, it's so volts per volts division? Volts per division. Right now we're at one volt per division, so we're plus and minus one volt triangle wave. There's plus and minus a half. Now, I'm on line triggering, so we're not at exactly 60 hertz, so we're not locked in. Okay. If I switch the trigger to the channel we're using, we're using channel one, I'm going to put it on channel one. And then I can adjust the level that it triggers at. And now you can see we've got a nice solid wave that's not moving around any. Yeah. All right. And the trigger is where it starts the wave out. So I'm going to move off here so we can see the beginning of it. As I change this, it, or as I turn this, it changes the voltage that that triggers at. So we can... Pick where so we're it's want it's to like start. a noise gate basically. And if I go too far, it'll vanish. It'll vanish. Yeah. And if I go too far the other way, it'll vanish as well. So you can you can pick where you want it to trigger in your waveform. Cool. All right. And it's a little red light here. Push slope plus is red, minus is green. Meaning whether it's a positive or negative slope. If I hit it, it'll invert. So if you are interested in a transition in your wave where you know it's going to go from a high level to a low level, you want it to have the green light on so you're on a negative slope. Okay. And if you want to look at your waveform after it goes from low to a high, you'd have it like that. All right. Now, um, 
you can do timing measurements with this where um, I use it mostly when I'm dealing with microcontrollers and whatnot, where I need to know the timing on a particular event, you know, between certain things. I've actually timed my software where I've had a, a, a output bit toggle on the output port. Okay. And then do something in software and then have it toggle the bit again. And then I put, put my scope on that pin and I can see how long it took. So I'm actually getting a timing of my software, how long it takes to do a particular subroutine directly from an oscilloscope. And if you ran it on a faster computer, it could take less time it and would, things yeah, like that. Exactly. That's neat. So. And you can do this um, with, with things like that, like uh, we could take these probes and put this on a computer and show things happening. We're going to do that in a few minutes. Cool. Yeah, I got, I got one of my you, you've got. I got blinking lights. Oh, we're going to do it with the blinking we'll lights? With the blinking lights, we'll look at the control lines that are actually sending things. Very cool. Um, a couple other things on the uh, signal generator. You might want to get a let's zoom in on this. This is a, is it a Beckman or a BK? Anyhow, um, this is real simple, very old. If he could focus on it, we'd be doing great. There, there you go. go. Okay. You, se <laughs> you select your uh, magnitude here. It's, it's by tens, like one ten hundred thousand, going all the way across. And you select the waveform that you want here. Right now, I'm on square wave. And if you look on the oscilloscope, you can see we have a nice, pretty square wave. Uh, where's intensity? There. A little wonky at the beginning of it, but... Um, I can select triangle wave, which is what I had before, there, and now we have a triangle wave. And we can also have, whoa, man, I think I leaned my head Yeah, you leaned your head in there and you made it angry. Um, hang on, I'll, I'll, I'll get us back there. Oh, it's really not It's like It's really unhappy at the moment. Somehow we zoomed up to there. Well, here, I want to hit sine wave and when you connect. No, it's, it's this. It's the... It, it's the image on the oscilloscope that's driving the camera out of focus. Okay, because oh, it's <laughs> flickering. Yeah, Hold you're, you're making let's, it angry. Uh, you, it was this. when you changed the intensity. There you no, go. No, it's because it was flickering back and forth. The, the time basis was okay. messing with Here, now, now we can go back in and okay. get a look I'm at it there. To, oh, and we have the amplitude on our wave here. We can turn that down and we can turn it up. And there, we just uh, discovered a whole new way to really piss off autofocus. That was kind of cool. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to, no, it's not going to like that. All right. Oh, we can increase the frequency. Uh, that's this knob down at this end. Here, get at this end. There. I'm adjusting the frequency here, and I'm going to crank that up to something we can play with a little better. And then I can turn the time base up here. There, now we're not flickering. It's not going to Ah, work. okay. Okay, and again, with the, uh, the slope, you can play around with where it's going to trigger. Okay, this, that's pretty much all I want to do with this oscilloscope. Um, I want to go over to the, the, uh, the other scope we have. So we want to get out the pretty one? So we want to get out the pretty one. Okay. okay. This is a BK Precision 40 megahertz model 1540 scope delay. And we can turn this off. Now, there's some other things we should talk about on here before we put it away. While, okay. while we're talking about basic scope 101 stuff. All right. Um, I wanted to oh, teach people about the, the calibration thing. Okay. And the intensity adjustment, focus adjustment, you know, the, the, the good basics. I want to cover the stuff that, that a lot of people, especially guys like you that have been doing this for, you know, 300 years, that you don't even think about this stuff. But the 12-year-old the kid sitting in Arkansas who this is his first time getting a real look at a scope, I want to. That is so cool. Yeah, well, it's my. It's my. No, it's just the noise here. I want to. I want to. Oh, you want to see? Leave that right there. Don't move. I want to zoom way in. Hold it steady. Uh, look at that. That's really cool looking. Uh, you want to see noise? Hold on. What'd you do? Crank the speed way up. Yeah, we're 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 getting a good look at what the noise looks like. There's like a little tiny ripple. It'd be interesting to see what frequency that is. Anybody who wants to do the math, I'm at 50 microseconds per grid. You lost and it. I lost it. There. And I think it looks like we have. Turn your trigger off. Just let it let it. No, then it's not moving. With the trigger oh, okay. on, I can freeze it. It looks like we have two waves per grid. 
Okay. So if somebody wants to give us... And like you're a, at 50 microseconds. Yes. So, cool. All right. Now, now what's our volt division? I had okay. it at 0.5 volts per division. Okay. Um, this right here is your calibration Hang on, point. hang on. i got to zoom out so people can see that. Okay. Right here, we have a calibration loop. Okay. Now, what and is that? It's got a little loop on it, and that's for hooking your uh, channel to. And there we go. Now... This is outputting 0.5 volts peak to peak. How do you know? Because it says it right there. Ah, here we'll zoom in on that. And it's putting out one kilohertz. Okay. Oh, it's got the little wavy equal sign, so it's about. This is not a real precision machine device. But what you do, there's a calibration adjustment here and a calibration adjustment here. And you can see the big red cal. Now, my... Uh, Let's get it to trigger. Let's go there. And, oh, I need it on the line if I'm going to zero it. So there's zero. And there's our signal. Now, 0.5 volts peak to peak. We're on 2 volts per grid. Well, let's make it 0.5 volts per grid. So right now, it should be outputting one, gr one grid plus or minus. So I'm going to adjust the calibration on this. Well, we're right on, but that's this red knob here. You can... Now, if it should be one grid plus and minus, you're at zero going plus well, one grid. I, I, I agree. Like I said, this isn't a piece of precision equipment, and it's old. Oh, okay. But... The other thing, more, more importantly for most of the measurements you're going to make, is the time base, one kilohertz. So if you're at one millisecond per grid, you're going to want your waveform to uh, start and stop on the grid line. So I have it triggering right on the first grid, and going out across here, there it is. I can play around. It's like that's at the stop where you're not playing with the calibration any. And you can see it's going a little bit beyond each one. So if I tweak it down, there, the bottom trace is ending on a grid line all the way across. So there you have the time calibrated correctly. Okay. All right, and at this point, you take off your, from your calibration and put it on the thing you want to actually measure and get a reading. Now, what is that? That's, that's just a, a ground that's pin? That's just a ground pin. And what's the trace rotation? Um, that's rotating your sweep in the oh, display here. Oh, okay. Um, if your zero line was... Yeah, angle, like slewed. All right, now I see one. It. This is focus, and that's yeah, obvious. That's, Every scope I've ever seen is focus. Yeah, that's, um, and then we've got intensity. Now, this one also has a thing that says pull a stig. So there's an astigmatism There's an astigmatism adjustment. adjustment. Let's make your line nice and crisp. It's like it's fuzzy if you're way off. Now, how is that different from focus? I'm not exactly certain. I think that's for, like, when you use the scope with your giant thick glasses, because you have an astigmatism, that's so that you can, you can see it versus what okay. I see. The rest down here is pertaining to triggering, when you want the thing to start. Um, there's, you can have it delay some amount of time after it gets the trigger before it starts displaying. Like a TDR circuit or something? Yeah, we're not, we're not going to delve into that right now. For okay. the stuff that I do, I generally don't have to deal with it. Um, there's an XY setting. That's where you get your nice pretty patterns where you feed your different um, frequencies in to get your, say the word, Lizacious? Lizacious? Yeah, yeah, that's how you get those patterns. Okay. Um, so... I see you've got A, alternate, internal, B, and then X minus Y. Well, that's X dash. It's, or it's, X dash Y. This would be your X input, this would be your Y input. Ah, you okay. That setting. Now, there's an now, external trigger. External trigger. This is set up right now to uh, trigger off of... That's, I'm just going to... Put the calibration back. We'll get a nice wave and something bigger. And we'll trigger off a of channel one. Okay. All right. Right now, 
it's normal. Auto trigger, um, let's see. Single is going to give you just a, a single trace going across. See, when I hit it, I get one sweep. That's not very good because it doesn't, it, it's on gone this, in the blink of an eye. On this scope, yes. On the next scope, we'll... The, the I know, but I'm trying to say why would you want to do that on this one? You'd do that at like a really low speed and you'd see it draw exactly. across. Okay. Well, so there where you get your single. Okay. But once it goes off the end, you're done. It's, 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 done. it's a real time thing. All right. Auto, I don't generally use. I'm either going to trigger online or I'm going to set it to the channel I'm on and do either normal where you adjust your trigger level or uh, single on the other scope. Fix and auto, I generally don't use. Now, what is fix and auto? What do I do? don't know. I don't use them, so oh, okay. I, don't, I don't play around with that. But trigger source, the type of trigger. Now, what's this coupling thing? Unsure. Another thing I don't generally use, but it's mostly, you see, it's video. It's for doing it's video It's for work on TV stuff. Okay. Exactly. I should so. probably learn that then, given the amount of video we're doing. <laughs> but everything we do is digital, so I don't, I don't deal with carrier waves and stuff like that. So. Yes. All right, so that's our initial look at an oscilloscope. Is there anything else you want to cover in this particular? Um, this scope, not really. Okay. Um, it's like, yeah, the, the intensity we didn't really make. Why is it? Oh, that's the trigger. I want yeah. The intensity is just the brightness of your line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're having something where you're having it run real fast, go way up there. Go way, way up there. Why aren't we? We're at 100. We're on the, we're on you're at megahertz. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Plug that in the bottom right one. Bottom right? Yeah. Be the one that says output, Paul? Yeah. You're at 100 kilohertz right now. And our voltage is... So that's 100 high. kilohertz square wave, or sine wave we're putting in there. Okay. So when you're going that fast, it's just like a, a, a wash across the yeah. display. All right, go faster than that. Megahertz? Bing, and crank it. That's the maximum output of this. That is... And that's the maximum setting on this. 2 megahertz? Yeah, 2110 megahertz. Yes, like I said, this is fairly old stuff. That's and pretty impressive, given that thing's crapping out um, 2 million sine waves every second. I mean, that's... Yes. You'll notice that they aren't, they aren't that's pretty. That's an amazing anymore. feat, man. They aren't pretty anymore. <laughs> um, when you start getting to the higher settings here, your intensity on your beam starts to fall off. Now, it's so not drawing that beam across there two million times a second. Well, no. If it was, it wouldn't matter because the persistence of vision of actually, the thing. Actually, no. That, that's how fast we're drawing here. There's no way. Yeah, there is. That's drawing that line two million times a second across is there. It, the, your I don't know what the delay on the retrace to get the beam to the back to the other side of the display is, but... It's way longer than two millionths of a second. Way uh, longer. You're the, thinking television. The, okay. The, right. the, the phosphor burn latency in that thing Okay, this is, isn't the same phosphor as what you have in a television. No, it's not. But watch, if I go, if, if I go all the way down, okay, and, and I, I grab that, that little now, guy is I'm, going I'm getting up just and down. A line. That's going up and down two million times okay. a second. Okay, there's no way in hell. But see, see the the width behind that. That's the persistence on. That's your yeah. That's the persistence of the phosphor. It's way way longer than two millionths of a second. Well, okay, that's drawn past there right now at about twenty times a second. Okay, you're setting. The sweep. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the persistence. Like, like, okay, look, see that, that, that line. Now, if I move this across there, right okay. there is about 15, 20 times a second. Okay, you're looking at five milliseconds per grid. Yeah. There's ten grids there, so that's 50 milliseconds for the width of the screen. Mm -hmm. So that would be 20 times going across a yeah. second. I was doing it by, you know, audio stuff. That's okay, about fine. 20 hertz. But that sine wave is going up and down 2 million times a second. 
Okay. That beam has to be going that fast side to side in order to get that sine wave to trace out like that. It's not doing any digital signal processing where it reads it and figures out what to display and then puts up a display. You're seeing the output direct from the connectors over here. I mean, I touch things here and I can affect it. Well, not at that rate, but... That's nuts. It just doesn't, it's all, doesn't sound is, right to is, me. I, I could be totally wrong. Absolutely. I know squat about oscopes. Audio, you live in audio and I do. Digital, I do. All right. But this isn't digital and this isn't audio. But, man... This is straight analog electronics. Damn. It just doesn't seem right to and me. I, mean, I, I understand it's a 40 megahertz rated oscilloscope. And it's perfectly capable of handling something at 40 megahertz. But the fact that you could trace an electron beam back and forth across four inches of space, even even though this will go up to 40, even at only two million times okay. a second. That it's just, going up and down two million times yeah. a second. This sets how fast you're going side to side. Okay, so how fast are we going if side I to side? If I had one wave going across here from start to finish, Which would be about right there. Okay. So that's 900 kilohertz. That has to be going across 900,000 times a second in order for our 900,000 hertz wave to have one wave that's on madness. the screen. It's madness. Just that ah, freaks me out. Freaks you out. Freaks okay. me out. Well, it, it is <laughs> nice to know that you are freaked out. You have, you have freaked me out. So, all right, so that's our, our look, our basics of an oscilloscope. So that's our Oscilloscope 101, the first video of our new electronic series. Yes. And when we come back, we're going to get into a bigger scope. We're going to go a, better scope. a yes. much better scope. Oh, okay. Yeah. Still not state of the art. <laughs> by any stretch but it's still, the it's, it's worlds ahead of this. It lets me do my job. Okay. So. Well, you guys have fun. Um, we'll be back in the next video with Oscopes Part 2. I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Paul Kidwell. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, donate, and call your mom. Please. She misses you. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.